Hello, and welcome to The Joy of Drafting. I'm Travis Simulan Sowers, and today we're going to talk about splashing. Most limited decks are two colors, for example, red and green. Splashing is when you play one or two cards in your deck that are not the same color of mana as your main two colors, like playing a Doom Blade in your red and green deck. Magic players call this splashing black. There are some formats where it's easy to splash, and some where it is difficult. There's even some formats where you'll be playing three or four colors regularly. For the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on situations where you are splashing one or two cards in a two-color deck. These lessons will serve you well in any format, and as you play a format more, you can see how far you can stretch your mana base. Let's start with why you splash, and then talk about how. I don't think enough people talk about the why, so let's dive into it. If you're splashing a card, there needs to be a reason. It should be giving your deck access to something it doesn't already have, or be a bomb in its own right. It's also worth pointing out that you should only splash for cards that are good in the late game, because you're not likely to have the mana to cast your splashed cards early. Seasoned Hallowblade is an amazing 2-drop, perhaps one of the best ones for Limited we've seen in quite some time, but if you're never going to be able to cast it until turn 7 or 8, it's not really worth trying to splash for it. Use what you've learned from the Quadrant Theory episode to determine which card is worthy of a splash. Removal is often worth splashing for. Let's imagine you have a white bomb, a few good value blue cards, and plenty of playables, but only one removal spell. This is a spot where you will want to start considering splashing for removal. We're going to take a look at two removal spells and see which one would be a good splash for us. We'll start with Murder. 1 BB, destroy target creature at instant speed. This is a solid removal spell. Let's compare it to Flatten. 3 in a black, instant, target creature gets minus 4, minus 4 until end of turn. Murder is clearly the better removal spell. It kills anything. If you're being attacked by a 5-5 flyer, you'd much rather cast Murder. But if we're going to be splashing it, Flatten is the card we want access to. This is a very important rule to remember when splashing. If a spell requires two colors of mana that aren't your main colors, you can't splash it. It isn't hard to fit enough black mana in your blue-white deck list to cast Flatten, but you're going to have a very difficult time fitting enough black sources in to cast Murder and still have enough blue and white to play your deck. When you're looking for splashable cards of any kind, make sure they only have one color of mana in the casting cost that isn't one of your main colors. Bombs are the other main thing we're going to be interested in splashing for. The same rule of mana colors apply. We know Baneslayer Angel is a bomb, but it isn't one you can splash in your black and green deck. What are some splashable bombs? Rares that are gold cards, that is, multicolored, often fall into this camp. Use what you've learned in the Quadrant Theory episode to identify them, but we'll showcase a few here. The Scarab God is one of the most bomby of bombs to ever bomb. 3 blue-black for a 5-5 five five that can't be easily killed, makes more creatures, scries, and makes your opponent concede. If you're playing blue or black and see one of these in draft, you should think about splashing it. Frondland Felidar, 2 white-green for a 3-5 Vigilance with creatures you control with Vigilance have one tap, tap target creature. Not only is this a great rate for the stats, even if the Felidar is the only vigilant creature you have, an instant speed tapper can easily turn the tide of battle in your favor. You can tap something that would be attacking you and then swing back on your turn. The Felidar can even attack and then tap down a blocker. What a good kitty. Garrick Relentless. Three green for a planeswalker. He fights creatures, makes wolves, and eventually transforms into some kind of zombie Garrick that will win the game for you pretty quickly. I'm including Garrick here because the Splashable Bomb doesn't have to be a gold card, it just has to be powerful enough to be worth potentially compromising your mana base, and only have one color of mana in the casting cost that isn't one of your main two colors. Now, let's talk about how you splash. It's all about the fixins. Fixing in Magic is a broad term that generally refers to cards that create multiple colors of mana, allowing you to fix your mana base, because it would be broken and in need of repair without them. When you're looking to fix a mana base for splashing, a good rule of thumb is to have three sources for splashing one card, and four sources for splashing two cards. This makes sure you'll often have the source you need to cast a card when you draw it. 
Fixing comes in several forms, but I found it helpful to categorize fixing as the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's take a look at a few examples of each kind of fixing and then chat about how highly to prioritize them. First, the good. Evolving wilds. Land. Tap, sack, search your library for a basic land card, put it into play tapped, and shuffle. This is often the best fixing you can find and has been reprinted in many magic sets. If you're playing a blue-green deck and want to splash a red card, adding an Evolving Wilds and a Mountain gives you two red sources. With just one Wilds, you're most of the way to a splash. Windscarred Crag, Land, enters tapped, gain one life, tap for red or white. We talked about how good these types of lands are in the Building a Mana Base episode, but they're even more useful when splashing. If you're playing a blue-red deck and looking to splash a white card, one of these gives you a source of white without using up any of your land slots. What if you're a red-white deck looking to splash a blue card? Well, this still helps. Now you can include an island, and the crag will have you covered by tapping for both of your other colors. Dual lands, like Windscarred Crag, also don't take up spell slots in your deck. Cultivate. Two and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for two basic land cards, Put one into play tapped, one on the board, and then shuffle. This card is called a great. It gives you as many sources for a splash as an Evolving Wilds and puts one land right into play. It even draws you another. The only downside? It's green. You can only play this in green decks. Most sets will have some kind of mana fixing in green. Usually, it's not worth getting into green for the fixing. That is, it's usually right to pick an Evolving Wilds over a card like Cultivate if it's early in the draft. Once you have a few good green cards and see something like Cultivate, feel free to grab it. Now, the bad. Shimmering Grotto. Land. Tap for generic. Pay one and tap. Add one mana of any color. You'd better have an amazing card to splash if you're resorting to this to play it. It can't tap for any colors of mana unless you pay extra. Your splash card is even going to cost one extra mana if you use this to cast it. I'm not too proud. I've played Shimmering Grotto and cards like it to splash powerful cards, but I don't want to. The tax is too damn high. And lastly, the ugly. Prismite. Two for an artifact creature. It's a 2-1 with the same filtering ability from Shimmering Grotto. I'd hesitate to call this mana fixing at all. It doesn't tap for mana and is quite fragile, not to mention it has the same tax as the Grotto. If you're depending on this for fixing while your opponent is attacking you with a 4-2, you're going to be in quite an awkward spot. Try to prioritize the good fixing when you can find it in draft. You never know, a splashable bomb might show up in pack 3. Also, think about how splashable a card is when making your early picks. Having the ability to play a solid removal spell on the splash can be quite a game changer. Thank you for watching this episode. If you'd like to see me stretching the bounds of a reasonable mana base live, check out my stream at www.twitch.tv slash simulan. If you'd like to make a big splash of cash rain down and sponsor the video series, lines are open and operators are standing by.